What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. The day has finally come where we can no longer garden outside, and so we are moving indoors into the grow room. I really hope that you guys are going to stick with us throughout this uh, these coming months because we have a lot planned, a lot of really exciting things we're going to be doing. And so it's not just going to be just in this grow room, but it won't necessarily be all out in the garden because it's getting cold and winter has finally arrived. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to have a really fun project at home and how to grow your own potatoes indoors. If you're growing underneath grow lights, I'm going to walk you through the grow lights you're going to need, kind of the power that you should need to be able to produce potatoes, as well as the different soils, fertilizers, and kind of steps to take so you can grow potatoes at home. All right, so the grow lights we're going with are the usual. These are the 48 inch, four foot long T5 high output lights with a grow light installed. So these grow lights put out 6,500 Kelvin. You guys know that we talk about this all the time, that the higher the Kelvin, the bluer the light, and blue light is really good for photosynthesizing. It gives lots of green growth. You don't want a low Kelvin. So these lights have been replaced with a 6,500 Kelvin light. There are eight in here, so there's eight bulbs per fixture, and each bulb will give out roughly about 3,000 lumens. So eight times 3,000 is about 24,000 lumens per fixture, which is awesome. That's enough light to be able to grow these potatoes. All right, so we do have two different potatoes here that we're gonna be planting. We have two different containers, so we can kind of just experiment to see which one grows indoors the best. We have a little red skin potato, and we also have some Kennebex. Now these Kennebex are notorious for getting really large, so I'm curious to see how they do indoors underneath grow lights. Now these potatoes are actually seed potatoes we created ourselves from potatoes we grew early this season. Super simple, all you have to do is basically just let some potatoes sit out in a kind of a, about a 50 to 60% humidity environment. They're naturally gonna form eyes and they're kept cool as well. If your potatoes are kept really warm, they'll mold and rot, but if they're kept cool, they'll grow very slowly. And, uh, and also, we put them in just a dark location, and these are actually forming eyes already. Now these would never make it until spring for us to plant, but we do have potatoes actually that are, are packed in cold sand, cold damp sand, and those will actually be our seed potatoes that we use the following season. So same method applies, but we're gonna be planting some of these today because like I said, there's no chance of them lasting until spring. Now the fertilizer we're gonna be using is our usual, it's Trifecta Plus. And the reason why is because the soil we're using is a very plain pro mix. There's nothing in here, it is just plain peat moss that's been amended with some dolomitic lime to uh, reduce the acidity. There's been also amended with vermiculite and perlite. And so there is no nutrients in this mix here. So we need to provide the nutrients for our potatoes to grow. And potatoes are really heavy feeders. So we're gonna be bringing the heat with some trifecta. Now you'll also notice this is very, very dry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add water first, I'm gonna pre-moisten it, and then I'm gonna add my fertilizer. It's really important that you do that. Anytime you're working with a dry mix, not just if you're planting potatoes, but literally anything, whether you're starting seeds, whether you're starting seedlings, transplanting seedlings, always pre-moisten your mix first, and here's why. So when you add water to soil, the water has a tendency to run through the soil pretty easily until it's not fully until it's fully absorbed. So initially what's going to happen when you put a lot of water in there, that water is going to run through the pot and out through the bottom because soil has a tendency to take a while to absorb. Even if it's really high quality soil like this is, there will be a, a good amount of water that runs through the pot and we have it in a tray that doesn't have any holes so it can be reabsorbed into the soil. Now the reason why we wanna pre-moisten before we fertilize is because all of that excess water is going to wash away the fertilizer out of the soil in a process called leaching. And once it has left the soil, it's very difficult for it to wick back up completely in a way that actually, uh, in a way that's efficient for the plant to use. And so we're gonna pre-moisten first. And you should always pre-moisten first before you fertilize. That way you don't have that happening because once the soil is adequately moist, even if you let it dry out a little bit and you rewater, there should be enough moisture that kind of helps that, that water to actually absorb into the soil. Um, if the soil is bone dry like this, that's where you get some of that runoff because it's so dry that it almost resists the water. 
but even if it has a teeny tiny itty bitty little bit of moisture left in the soil, that's enough so that it doesn't run through the soil and it will um, readily absorb. So from now on, once we have fertilizer in the soil, it shouldn't be a problem because we've already pre-moistened. So this is crazy. So um, I was just kind of showing Ashland the, uh, the, two, the differences between the two. And once we dug down about an inch or so below the soil, you'll notice that the, that the soil is actually still very, very dry. And that just goes to show what I'm talking about with pre-moistening is that it takes a good probably three to five minutes for that soil to fully absorb. And once it's fully absorbed, if you have the right type of soil, it'll take a really long time for it ever to get this dry again. And so it's that initial, that initial absorption phase that is what you're looking for to, um, to kind of get the soil all, all uh, moistened up. But also too, another thing is if we were putting seeds in this soil, right? If we're putting seeds in the soil and you go to water, what happens when you water is it tends to bubble up. It tends to float because the soil is so dry that it actually kind of repels water and it has a tendency to float, but all your seeds are going to sink and that really disturbs the soil. And it really kind of, um, it, it gives you inconsistencies when seed starting as well. So even though we're putting potatoes in here, you do not want any type of, of settling and moving around because it really just disturbs the seed bed. So um, just another little tip for you guys that you never thought you'd get when you're watching a potato growing indoors video. So glad I could give you guys that. So look at that, look at that soil float. Look at that, just look at that. That right there is floating right on top of, on top of water. If you were a seed, you'd sink all the way down to the bottom. All right, so in these containers, these are three gallon containers. Now, normally I would throw about two to three potatoes in a container of this size. You might be thinking, holy cow, that seems really crowded. And in a container, it actually can be a little bit more crowded than it, out, than it is out in the garden because we're really, you know, we're, we're growing in the best quality soil possible, premium soil. We're able to feed them pretty simply and easily so we can keep the, the food going. And if they are a little bit root bound, they don't actually suffer that much from that. And you'll find that all the growth is up here, all the potato development is down here. So um, you can actually kind of crowd them in containers, which is nice. But when you're growing indoors, you really don't want to crowd them too much. And that's because these lights, even though they're pretty strong, they are not even close to as strong as the cloudiest day. And I want to rephrase that. Just, you, people get hung up on that. These lights on full blast are not even, they're probably one-tenth, maybe one-twentieth as strong as the cloudiest day outside. And that's because the sun is so incredibly powerful that these lights don't even, they don't even scratch the surface of a cloudy day outside. So when the sun is out in full blast, obviously, it's even stronger. And so we want to make sure that we don't stress these, these plants out. So we're only going to put about one to two potatoes in these three gallon containers. Because remember, all that foliage is going to grow up. And because the light is only coming from one direction, we don't have a lot of light coming from the sides too much. And so those plants are going to be basically reaching for that light. So I'm going to be throwing just two potatoes in and oh, I got to fertilize. So we're going to fertilize first before we put the potatoes in and I'm going to fertilize quite heavily. I'm going to be using normally it'd be about a quarter cup. I'm going to be using about a half cup of fertilizer in this pot here, about that much. And that fertilizer is going to give the potatoes everything they're going to need to grow throughout their life. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, well, Luke, are they actually going to mature? And the answer is absolutely. If you provide enough, if you provide enough sunlight, grow light light. <laughs> if you provide enough nutrients and you really keep the, the plants stress-free, they absolutely will. There's no difference between indoors and outdoors. Um, think of, <laughs> I always think of The Martian, um, the, the, the movie The Martian. Maybe we can see if we can find a clip of that. He actually grows some potatoes. And, uh, and it doesn't matter if you're on Mars, if you're on Earth, if you're indoors, it really doesn't matter. If you can provide the growing conditions necessary for, uh, for life that is required, it's going to survive. Now, the maturity date will be slightly longer, right? So that's the one thing that will be extended. It will survive and it will produce potatoes, but it won't produce potatoes in probably 75 to 85 days. It might be longer, more like 95 to 100 days, simply because 
these lights are not nearly as strong as the sun is, obviously. And so we're going to take these, we're going to throw them in the soil here, just as we would outdoors. And the next question you're probably wondering is, well, Luke, what about hilling? The thing is, you don't need to hill in containers. It's not really necessary. What we can do is if, if we really need to, we can add a little bit of soil if we find that's needed. But generally, because all of the light is coming from up above, and because the foliage is basically going to cover this entire pot, there really won't be any exposed areas for potatoes to form. And because the soil is so loose, the potatoes are going to be encouraged to go down rather than form on the top. So another reason why we won't have to really hill these potatoes. So one of the nice things about being in a grow room that has a hose is you don't have to fill up a watering can all the time. We're just going to water these from below and they're going to soak up that excess water there. And uh, that's one of the perks about having a legit grow room is no watering cans needed. Just everything can be done with a hose. All right, there we go. First grow room project done. I'm really excited to see how these do. Again, this is an experiment. I've grown potatoes before to completion, but uh, I grew them in containers indoors and then moved them outdoors. I've never done to completion potatoes exclusively indoors. And so I'm really excited to see how these turn out. And uh, let me know, I'm kind of fun to see, go back, which one do you think is gonna do best? Do you think the red skin is gonna do better or the kind of back is gonna do better? Um, I would like to, you know, like I said, planted two potatoes in each. They both got the same soil, same amount of fertilizer, same light, obviously, everything's gonna be the same. I'm curious to see which one does best. So are you team Canabec or team Redskin? Let me know in the comments box down below. But we're gonna put these to the back there, make room for some more projects. Also, let me know what you'd love to see us do. We, got, we have plans to do an herb garden. We're gonna have an herb garden over here, I think. And then we're also gonna have some, uh, some salad bowl mixes, some lettuce pots, maybe some microgreens. Let us know what you wanna see in the comments box down below. I really want to produce content that you all want to watch, obviously. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you all on the next episode. As always, grow bigger.